The History of Photography The history of photography is quite a revolution from the evolution of the camera. The first camera was quite different from what it is today. Before digital photography, we had film. We developed the film first to see it. Film photographers would develop their film in the darkroom. The first camera was nothing more than a box with a hole in it. The light would come through the opening and expose the paper that was coated with silver chloride. The silver chloride would then need to be handled with technical skill. If the silver chloride was exposed to the light, the development process would start. In the year 1800, a man named Thomas Wedwood captured the first image with having light-sensitive material. Only five years after Thomas made his first attempt at capturing an image in a camera using light-sensitive material, he passed away due to failing health. But in 1816, a man named Joseph Nifor Nips used a paper coated with silver chloride. The photographs started out as negatives, but the negatives weren't permanent. He then would develop them in the darkroom. Later on in 1833, Joseph Nifor Nips worked with a man named Dagur. They worked together to photograph subjects. But in 1833, Nifor died suddenly, only leaving Dagur with notes. Dagur used a mirror-like silver plate. This is encased in iodine fumes, which reacted with the silver to form a coating of silver iodine. After an agonizing amount of time, the image was exposed using mercury fumes. On January 7, 1839, the first realistic photographic process was announced at a meeting of the French Academy of Sciences. Arrangements were accommodated to the French government to obtain the rights. They offered Daguer and Ips' son and the invention to the world for exchange for pensions. After people heard about this, a man named William Henry Fox Talbot, who succeeded in creating stabilized photographic negatives on paper in 1835, thought of a way to help his work succeed. So in early 1839, he learned of a new improvement, a functional fixer from John Herschel, the astronomer, John discovered hyposulfate of soda, which is also called hypo, but now is known as sodium sulfate. It would help the silver salts dissolve. When the word got out about this solvent, Dagger substituted this for a hot, less effective water treatment. In 1839, John Herschel produced the first glass negative, but the process was so intense to duplicate. At the beginning of 1840, a man named Talbot, he did experiments on a product called silver chloride or sensitive paper that required camera exposures of an hour or longer. He invented the cattle type process. Like Daguerre's process used the principle of chemical development of a tiny latent image to shorten the exposure time to minutes. Talbots developed out silver halite negative process is a basic technology used by chemical film cameras today. Hypolate buried thought of a process of photography but waited to announce it. In turn, he was not credited as the inventor. But in 1841, Sullivan James Pitar invented a process for making photographs on glass. In the 19th century, a new type of photograph came to be popular. Tintypes, also known as melanotypes or ferriotypes, were cheap variations of the embryotype. Now the emulsion was not placed on glass. It was now coated on a thin iron sheet that was enameled black. In the beginning, they were displayed in cases encased by a narrow gilt frame. Soon after that, they were abandoned. The embryo type was easy to make and inexpensive. They were most popular with soldiers in the Civil War and stayed for a form of folk art for the rest of the 19th century. Also, tin types were popular with street photographers because of the same reason, inexpensive. In 1847, Count Sergei Lovich Lovetsky is considered the head of Russian photography and one of Europe's most important early photographic pioneers, inventors, and innovators. He designed a bellows camera that dramatically improved the process of focusing on a subject. This allowed the photographer to pick what is in focus or out of focus, so the photographs would look better. They would have a higher quality than what it was in 1847. During the year 1849, Lovetsky was looking for the caucus by the famous Persian photographs and would be awarded a gold medal. This was the first time a gold medal was given for a photograph. Herbert Bower Berkeley tested with his own version of collodane emulsions after Saman introduced the idea of adding dithionite to the developer. The dithionite was not needed to develop images. Then he published his discovery in 1881. His formula consisted of citric acid, 
sulfate, and pyrogal. Then he added ammonia just before to make the formula alkaline. The Platneotype company sold the product in London as Sulfo Pyrogal, developer. The Daguriotype, the process of making a Daguriotype starts with a silver plated copper plate. That plate is first buffed and polished until it looks like a mirror. Then the plate is sensitized to light over iodine and bromine in specialized light proof boxes. It made a demand for portraiture from the middle class while the industrial revolution was in succession. The demand couldn't be met with the cost of oil painting added to the development of photography. In the mid 19th century, photographers would concentrate their time on lithography for record keeping of landscapes and agriculture. One photographer named Robert Macpherson had a broad range of photographs of Rome. The countryside became a tourist destination and interior of the Vatican. Within a couple of years of lithography, he, the photographer, would be the person to photograph subjects using artificial light subjects in a studio. The photographer said, As far as I know, this application of electric light has never been tried. It is something new which will be accepted by photographers because of its simplicity and practicality. Lithography is difficult to copy and fragile, so its prices were between 50 cents to $10. This was costly to produce and photographers suggested that they change the process to make duplicating a photo cost effective. Changes were made by the photographic concept within 20 years after lithography was developed. George Eastman, the inventor of Kodak, thought of a way to not have photographers carry big boxes of photo plates and toxic chemicals. In July of 1888, Eastman Kodak produced a camera that went on the market and the slogan that went with it is, you press the button, we do the rest. This opened a whole new world with photography. Now photographers didn't need to develop their images by hand. The camera would take the hassle of toxic chemicals away. In February of 1900, Kodak unveiled the Kodak Brownie. The Kodak Brownie is an affordable camera that made the concept of the snapshot reality. The camera was nothing more than a cardboard box with a non-complex lens. It took a two and a quarter inch square pictures on 117 roll film. Due to the simplicity of the device, the cost of it was one dollar. The camera was manufactured for the average person to buy. Due to the reputation of the camera, it became the most remembered camera in history. Millions of units were produced, so they are relatively available, but didn't have a high collectible value. Ever since the beginning of photography, photographers wanted their images in color. The time it would take for a color image to be produced would be between an hour to days. The color that was captured by the camera was so intense that it had to be inspected with the light dimmed. On March 14, 1932, George Eastman, the inventor of Kodak, age 77, writes a suicide note saying, My work is done. Why wait? And shoots himself. He had a quote that I like. It is, What we do during our working hours determines what we have. What we do in our leisure time determines what we are. Another quote from him is, Light makes photography, embrace it. Admire it. Love it. But above all, know light. Know it for all it's worth. And you will know the key to photography. George Eastman. In 1936, photographers were wishing of a lighter glass plates and tripods. So the code was developed. It was the first multi-layered color film. With the development of color film, Kodak made a 35mm single lens reflex camera. Kodak's researcher, Leopold Goldwasi Jr. and Leopold Manz spent years on developing the 16mm movie film. When the next year came around, they tested another process on film. The process was not for the hobbyist because the film was $3.50 per roll. In today's money, that would be $54 per roll. The Kodachrome was used to capture the Heidelberg explosion in 1936. The Kodachrome was also used to accidentally capture President Kennedy's assassination in, in Dallas, Texas. A photographer for the National Geographic, Steve McCurry, used the Kodachrome to capture an image of the haunting green-gray eyes of the Afghan refugee in, in 1985. That image is still used in the magazine's most enduring cover image. At the end of the 1940s, Hasselblad in Sweden sells the first medium-format SLR for commercial sale. In Japan, the company Pentex introduces the automatic diaphragm. In return, Polaroid sells instant black and white film. Then in 1949, East German man's business, Zeiss, developed Contacts S, the first SLR with the, with the reversed image and a viewfinder. In 1959, the Nikon F was introduced. The Nikon F was a 35mm camera. The camera had lots of fixed focal length lenses. 
such as a 21mm f4, 28mm f5, 35mm f28, 105mm f25, and 135mm f35. There were longer lenses too. Nikon earned a reputation of indestructible camera. A New York camera repair shop said the camera is a hockey puck. Kodak released the first color Instax film for Polaroid in 1963. It was a step in the right direction, towards modern photography. In 1973, the color negative process called C22 was replaced by a group process called C41, a homogenic color print film development process introduced by Kodak. In 1985, Minolta produces the world's first autofocus SLR camera. This was a huge advancement in cameras. Before, you didn't know if your image came out blurry or in focus until you developed it. When 1990 came around, Adobe released its program Photoshop. Photoshop became a popular program for graphic designers and photographers. At the turn of the century, camera phones were introduced to the population. Now anyone could take pictures of anything. That would severely hurt the photographers in the years to come. In 2001, the company Polaroid goes bankrupt due to the advancement in technology. In turn, in 2004, the Kodak company went out of business due to the same problem Polaroid had. An analyst said they were overtaken by photographers moved to digital imaging. Since 2004, camera manufacturers such as Nikon, Canon, Olympus, Panasonic, Fuji have been trying to make a camera that people like or use. Before 2010, cameras didn't need to have high specifications. Now cameras have 22 megapixel sensors, burst mode, video recording, etc. Digital cameras can now record in 1080p. Two K, four K, and now even eight K. It's a huge step in the evolution of the camera when you think of the whole history of the camera and what it was at the beginning. Technology keeps evolving, it keeps changing. Something new and better is being thought of and produced right now.